Hello my dudes! Welcome to my channel, my name is Daphne and if you haven't subscribed already make sure you hit like and subscribe because Remy does it for me and as for today's video is going to be a bit more of a sad topic um, a little heavier if you're triggered by anything as far as food, eating disorders, anything like that I do recommend maybe skipping this video and watching something else but I think it was time that I shared this on my channel and kind of know a little bit about my background. It's been a really long time actually that I've sat down and talked about this. And I feel that actually there's people that this could help. I want to try to organize it kind of like before eating disorder, during, after recovery, and then current goals, current health update. <laughs> Me, when I was in high school, around 15, 16, I suffered from anorexia nervosa. If you don't know what it is, it's an eating disorder where you restrict your food, <laughs> basically to starvation. Honestly, growing up, there was nothing wrong. I was a really happy child and my family loved me. And I went to a private school and everything, everything was fine. Things did get hard financially for my family and it did affect you know me, I felt helpless. I felt like I couldn't do anything about it. I started, you know, going into middle school. I was my first time, kind of my body was changing. I was going through a lot of changes at that time. And personally, probably then I didn't live the most healthy lifestyle. I was always active in sports. I did horseback riding there nationally, but again, ate really bad, ate junk for most of the time. Not knowing that at that time, that's what my family could afford. And generally, I would say, you know, there were a few people that called me kind of chubby. Not, I wasn't never overweight, I never had a problem with my weight. But it started, it was the first time I actually looked at myself in the mirror like that. And I remember in the beginning, like it kind of started kind of like fun. I would do like 10 minute videos, like workout videos from YouTube. And you know, I did track and I started eating a little bit better like I was doing more portion control like I would eat the whole box of pasta at once I would eat like a plate you know one plate of food uh, like per meal and in the beginning I lost some weight and I was getting compliments for it and people you know were saying oh you look you look great that you look so much better so it honestly kind of started like that but eventually I didn't own a scale at the time but it was more the visual I wanted this I remember like I had this patch of cellulite that I wanted it to leave and it just would not leave no matter how thin I got it got to the point in time that again my family and I we had experienced a lot of loss and at that time I felt the only thing I could control was the food so it kind of went from this effort of mine of trying to kind of live healthier to just lose some weight into me memorizing. I remember I was memorizing every single calorie and food and reading honestly all the wrong articles about bad food and good food and detoxes and I don't know, I was just misinformed completely. And I set all these different restrictions to myself and I started eating less and less. And People were later to notice my family, like the way our schedules were, we were already pretty busy. So we never really sat down all together, like eating wise. So we were all kind of on our own schedules. So nobody really knew. And I wore baggy clothes a lot. And definitely my energy level started going down. And honestly, probably the first people that did notice it was my coaches and horseback riding. I was less strong and they were like, you know, maybe you should eat something. And I started restricting even more and more and it got to the point that I didn't even need to eat. I had really low energy, you know, just getting up out of bed was really, really hard for me. I couldn't keep up anymore with friends. I lost a lot of friendships for a while. I didn't know what was going on and I got really, really low in weight. My lowest, I was about 80 pounds and it got to the point that I remember I would wake up in the morning. I would not want to do anything. I would just... I was so 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 cold and it was it was around spring so it wasn't it was pretty warm out especially being back home in Greece um, and I would just sit in front of this you know room here and just stand there because that's all I had energy to do I felt very very dizzy and at some point when they told me that you know I was 
I was not strong enough to ride anymore that I stopped. I truthfully lost any, um, I was really depressed and I lost, you know, all my really will at that moment. The eating disorder had taken over me completely and I didn't care anymore. It wasn't even so much, like I remember I would be crying. I didn't like the way I looked in the mirror. I didn't like all my, the, I was so bony and I didn't have energy and it wasn't something I was happy about and I would wish and pray that I would forget all this and that all the calories that were in my head that I would forget about them all. I was like so afraid of eating. I would get so bruised so easily if I like tried to do any abs, like ab workouts like on the floor. I ended up, um, one night I completely collapsed and they had to take me to the hospital. And I had a lot of heart problems and some brain damage. And, and I was in the hospital for a really long time. And then I lost connection with everybody. And I lost connection with my friends. And I missed them so, so much. And I wish I could tell them what was going on. Definitely was afraid at that time of saying it to anybody. After that, they, you know, they forced me to eat. Started gaining some weight, got a little better. Um, tried a few therapists after that and that kind of only made me worse because they made me think that I was a problem. My first therapist was definitely not the greatest fit for me. She honestly made me psychologically worse because she made me really think that there was something wrong with me and that's why I got to that place. So eventually I stopped going to her and I actually really worked with a nutritionist for a while and she really, really helped me kind of see myself in a different way. But still, even though I had gained some weight back, I still wasn't fully recovered. Still the weight on the scale would make me extremely nervous just looking at it, even I knew about it. Still was very food focused in that way and didn't allow myself to eat to an extent. But I was definitely better and wanted to live a healthy lifestyle. I wanted to better myself and I didn't like feeling weak. I didn't like feeling like I couldn't do things and I wanted to get myself back. So that was probably the big shift where it clicked into me and I'm like, no, this is, I'm not, nothing's wrong with me and I love life, it's a gift and I appreciate it and I want to make this change. I want to do it for myself and nobody can tell me I can't. This is my time, I can do this. Um, during that time, me and my mother, we left Greece and we moved to the States so more changes came about and I honestly I signed up at a gym and I felt so insecure walking in the gym I was still quite thin a little over 90 pounds and I felt like everybody kind of laughed at me that you know kind of being silly at the gym didn't really know exactly what I was doing kind of just went in and tried doing different things I was extremely weak you know, even like the two pound weights felt like a workout to me and kind of just found myself in there. But for the first time, I had a goal different than about my body image. I wanted to feel stronger. And again, that was a big shift to me. Unfortunately though, as I was trying to gain weight, I did get issues with my digestive system. Um, it was part of as a complication after the eating disorder and a part of my intestine wasn't really working that great. Also, my microbiome was really off. Um, IBS, leaky gut syndrome, I had issues with all that. I was also diagnosed with celiac disease that I developed over time. During that time, again, it was really hard for me to eat due to the IBS, and I developed a different fear again for food, not because I thought they were gonna make me gain weight, it was more so that they caused me so much pain and discomfort. So it was really hard for me to gain weight. And so I lost kind of weight again until, you know, we kind of figure that out and clear that out with the doctors. When they diagnosed me with celiac, I definitely helped taking out the gluten. Um, I had my energy levels were way better and a lot of inflammation. I had a lot of inflammation after the eating disorder that's just, a symptom that a lot of people don't talk about. If you really go down low from anorexia, you get a lot of inflammation. 
Um, so that started to go away, but then I had this IBS and at the time I was also modeling at an agency and they had me, they wanted me to be this specific waist size. And for me, the way my body was structured, for me to maintain that specific waist size, I, I had to be so low in weight because anytime I would go up, my waist size would increase and I would get judged by that. And so that mentally too would hurt me because every time I would try to make a step forward, they would tell me, you know, your waist size has changed. Now you can't do this and so and so. So I remember doing fashion week. Um, that I believe that was in 2017 or 18, I'm not sure, in New York. And I just, that was probably, I left my agency after that. I, it wasn't helping me uh, mentally with my lifestyle. And I well, couldn't do anything that I wanted to do in the gym. Those new goals that I had and that mentality of it, nobody was ever satisfied with the way your body was. I just, it wasn't good for me. And I needed to make that decision because it was putting me back into tracks that I was before. And then as far as the whole digestive system, honestly, I had gone to the stage that the only thing I could tolerate eating was meat. And I fell upon this video about the, just in general, the animal industry, as far as factory farming, things like that. And it really hit me really bad because I've always loved animals growing up and I don't know, it really switched the way I thought about it. And I started looking into the vegan diet and I started very slowly incorporating things like more fibrous fruits and vegetables, more legumes, things like that, and slowly but slowly increasing the amounts and see if I could tolerate it. And for some reason, I don't know why, it seemed that it was helping all my IBS symptoms. But I was doing it very, very slowly, like literally, like I started like, for example, with lentils, right? I would do a tablespoon and if I tolerated that, next time I ate them, I would do more. Because again, as I said, anything I ate gave me so, so much discomfort. I remember I, could, I had to leave like midday at school and just go home because my stomach would get so descended and I was in so much pain. I could not even, I was completely folded over. And so yeah, but I found the vegan diet and it changed my perspective honestly to the way I looked at food. It was something, cause it was something that it was around love and nourishing your body and giving it, you know, things that were healthy and nutrient dense. And honestly the ethical side of it, like not, you know, hurting anything, but like, like from killing an animal or anything like that. And that really just resonated with me. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that if you're not vegan, you, you should be. I, I think, you know, whatever you do, you do. It just for me, it worked well for me and my beliefs and my lifestyle. And it helped me see food in a different way. It helped me see food as something that will heal my body. It will help me. And just a different kind of appreciation for it. So honestly, it changed my focus from it being like food and calories and losing fat, gaining fat kind of thing. It made me think of it as every meal was a chance for me to nourish myself. So that's me mentally alone helped me a lot, especially in those beginning stage of me recovering from the disorder. And my IBS symptoms, honestly, they started to reduce and go away. And I felt a lot better and I started to eat more. And then I started really getting into the gym. I honestly, I got certified as a personal trainer and I started studying it about it more. And I graduated high school and I started working as a trainer and I fell completely in love with the gym. I started spending so much time there and it was because I started to feel like myself again, like stronger, like I could do push-ups again, like things like that. And it, completely changed my perspective to health and fitness. I, you know, did one year in college and I studied, you know, some nutrition courses, things like that. I really wanted to learn the right stuff this time and I gained weight, I gained, and, with, and then I also came in touch with a mentor which also helped me because I now am striving, I want to, you know, compete in bodybuilding, get my pro card, things like that. So I had a mentor at the time and he told me, you know, like this will take oh, some time somewhere from your part. 
and he was just kind of there by my side which always helps a lot like if you are going through something have somebody to talk to can be very very helpful someone that you trust and if you are suffering with eating disorder definitely go get help go see somebody um and i promise that it's it will be okay and you will recover and all those thoughts that you had that you thought that it can't be fixed or that you will never get out of this loophole you will there is a bright side at the end even though it feels impossible at the time i promise that everything will can get so much better and it's so worth it to stick through it but yeah so i gained 40 pounds after a year and i've been focusing on building up my strength both getting my weight up building muscle having goals more of performance now i eat more food than ever my metabolism is up is quite high actually uh, i'm one of those outliers that can eat a lot more than what i probably could even and i'm healthy again because i had when i was in the hospital i had a lot of issues with my heart and i supposedly i wasn't supposed to be able to run again or do a lot of things i had a lot of complications so i am honestly truly very very lucky that i'm standing and i'm doing things that i can do today that i have recovered and now as far as my goals now i'm building up my own fitness my own fitness brand i have my own like coaching I train at a gym, I work at a gym as well, and I'm currently training right now. I'm in an off season. I'm building up to compete in bodybuilding and go pro one day. That's my current goals. I, and yeah, I just wanted to kind of sit down here with you guys today and kind of touch upon my story, kind of for you guys to know a little bit of my background, how I fell into this fitness and kind of i don't know like I'll get a little more personal with you guys i think if you have any questions at all you can always message me dm me if you're struggling with something as i said go get help go talk to somebody it's worth it in the end and and i hope this has helped this has given you inspiration i want you to know that having experienced such a loss so young and having almost literally died from it I have now given such a great gift of looking at life a different way and honestly I don't regret it because it's it's shown me what true love is and what truly opportunity and the beauty of what life is and right now I'm the happiest I've ever really been I'm really happy with how I'm eating, the relationship I have with food, the relationship that I have with myself, both self-image wise and from a body image perspective. Because they're two different things. I am completely comfortable as far as going on the scale. I don't associate with the number. I mean myself I'm a person I'm a trainer as well. I coach people on a daily day basis. You know, the scale is just a variable it goes up and down every day that's completely normal you know it's just a tool it doesn't define who you are things like that i have more energy than ever and have and i'm doing things in the gym i never thought i could do and it's just it's given opened up a path to a passion of mine so i hope if you have fallen to this channel that you get something out of this i want you to feel like we're family or my baby jet squad and I will be posting many videos um, as far as my fitness journey goes and I'll take you all through my competing season and everything like that. So I have so many things to do right now. I feel, you know, between my coaching and everything and setting it up. If you're interested, you can hit me up at everywherefitness.com and before I completely ramble because I think I've been talking, I'm not sure, I think I've been talking honestly for about 30 minutes. I can't see the clock from here, it's too far away. But I don't want to bore you. If, if again, I'd say if you found this helpful, interesting, whatever, please give me a thumbs up. It really, really does for me. And I will see you in the next video. As for now, I give you all my love and light. Love you. Mwah.